All right, we're on the final stretch now. Our last ninth concert of the season will uh, will feature two opposites of German Romanticism. One would be Johannes Brahms, who was, uh, can I call them closer? Closer of certain yes. eras? Yes, right? he, he summed up. Summed up, yeah. In his classical um, skill. Yeah, so his, his second uh, piano concerto in B flat major, which is nothing short of symphony, really, exactly. will be performed by uh, another wonderful friend of mine who is a professor of piano at USC. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Norman Krieger. Mm -hmm. And then in the second half, it will be followed by music of total opposites of Brahms. And those opposites were firmly in the camp of Berlioz and Liszt. Mm -hmm. So those are Richard Wagner and Richard Strauss. Mm -hmm. So that that is another interesting contrast. I'm glad we have intermission in between. You know, it'll it'll, it'll clear the air. Yes, <laughs> before Wagner comes in. Anyway, but uh, interestingly enough, I managed to choose the pieces which I love the most mm. from all those people. You know? Yes. Uh, so those will be Siegfried Rhine Journey from mm -hmm. Gottes Dämmerung, followed by Suite from Rosen Cavalier by Richard Strauss. I don't know if I need to comment on those pieces, just they are such a fantastic music. Well, I, I think you have three pieces by three composers that completely represent those composers. I feel with the second piano concerto, for me, no work is a glimpse into Brahms' personal musicianship and, and, and his grace as a pianist than that work. There's incredible subtlety uh, in, in that piece. And then, of course, uh, the ring cycle and Siegfried is the heart of Wagner's imagination in the music drama. And when the Americans came... And the mastery of orchestration and the oh, flow. absolutely flow, completely uh, endless, seamless yes. flow of music. It's just, uh, and, just and work speak, of And genius. speaking of connections from, yeah. from the uh, William Tell Overture with its storm and forest music um, to uh, the music of Berlioz, the scene in the country, yeah. to the Rhine journey. You have so yeah. many naturalistic elements there. But I think uh, Strauss himself felt as though Rosenkavalier was his most archetypal music because when the Americans came to his villa in Garmisch at the end of the Second World War, he apparently opened the door and said, I'm Richard Strauss, composer of Der Rosenkavalier. So this was his um, signature piece. Do you know piece. the people, do you know those two soldiers who they were? One was John Delancey. And the other one, Sherman Walt, principal bassoon of uh, Boston Symphony. Well, good for the Americans for sending principal woodwinds into the front. <laughs> Uh, engagement. <laughs> I would have sent viola players myself. But just, no, just kidding. It's really terrible of me. So, no, and, and of course we wouldn't have had the Strauss Oboe Concerto were it not for that encounter. encounter. And That's right, John Delancey yeah. must have been a very uh, engaging and persuasive person uh, to um, get this agreement to uh, make this Oboe Concerto. And we're glad that he did. It's one of the jewels from the last two years of Strauss's life. Exactly. Yeah. But Rosenkavalier is the jewel of his entire operatic it is. Uh, work, entire. It is. It's just, uh, I think it is just a total opposite, the other end from the Salome. Don't it you is. think? I, it's I, completely opposite. Well, absolutely. It's, it's basically um, celebrating the waltz tradition. And, and there are just so many kind of rich streams here from the uh, music of Schubert and the culmination in this music of um, uh, Richard Strauss and also the, the, the uh, yes and yeah. and well it's a celebration of Johann Strauss you're absolutely right. right but also the the vocal elements we have music from Puccini and Rossini and we have Verdi which will actually be sung the only actual singing on the festival um, but then this music that also lives so much um, in as an opera, as vocal music. They're well, that's the continuity of your program with uh, with uh, music from La Boheme, yeah. right? Yes, yes. 
and so uh, the West Side Story. I think what we're yeah. saying is that yeah. to really appreciate this festival, people need to come to every concert. Absolutely. They need to buy a subscription yeah. and come to every concert. Yeah. Though if they can't, they'll still enjoy the programs individually. But it's, it's a feast. Yes, yeah, so it just occurred to me this very moment that since we're doing it for so many years together, mm -hmm. we actually do so many things unconsciously. And uh, if I may say so, there is less and less chance of anything we do. It's not by chance That's anymore. Yeah. Because everything is so connected with our desire to create homogeneous programs. Mm -hmm. It's so much connected to our desire to express what we love in music and what we represent as performance and what we can express. And that is the reason that we find more and more connections as we talk about it. I know, that's because true. Because it, it is unconscious. Because we rehearsed for this year's discussion as much as we ever rehearsed, right? <laughs> that's right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that. But <laughs> anyway, so my final uh, request for our listeners or viewers is please come and visit our festival and try to get to all the concerts because they're all unique and all marvelous. And after this year, on to the 60th. Yes, the big one. The big one.